We have an old friend of uh, India, Dr. Ronald Liu, past president of uh, APACRS, talking to us about fibrous anterior capsules. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ramamurthy. So I just finished my lecture on the other side on how to deliver a memorable lecture, and I forgot to add that you should never follow Uday Defgan when he's speaking. Okay, <laughs> so he's an impossible act to follow. But so I'm talking today just about fibrous anterior capsules. Now you know that there are capsules and there are capsules, and I think in India you see a lot of fibrous uh, capsules. So with fibrous capsules, there are a few things you can do. If it's small and localized, you tear around. But where is it? If it's on the periphery, you're going to tear through it. They can be small, large, thick or thin, and they can be adherent integrated or they can be separate from the posterior uh, from the anterior capsule and lastly can you see it so let's look at some some movies okay so here you can see this uh, fibrous plug is fairly central this is easy peasy you know you start your rexis somewhere else and you just tear around it and the operation is over because the capsular plug doesn't really come into play it's not in the line of your capsular rexis so that's no problem so let's look at another case now um, let's move on to the next one. What about when the fibrous track runs across the uh, CCC line that you're going to take? And you can see here, I'm going to aim for the thinnest part of the fibrous plaque and see if I can tear either through it or over it. And here you can see it's actually gone through that fibrous uh, uh, band uh, quite easily, getting a good outcome. But you've got to be careful when you approach the fibrous band just be slow and steady. Now this is a rather more a thicker and you can see more opaque band, so it's likely to be more troublesome. Again, when I get there, I will re-grasp it just about now before I do it in my next pull and feel it. If I feel a lot of resistance, I will stop, but here I feel that it seems to be okay, so I carry on and you can see that tears across the fibrous plaque together with the anterior capsule. So that's a nice outcome. It doesn't always happen like this, it's fair to say. Now in this case, again, I've raised the flap. You can see the two fibrous bands there. In this case, you can see that as I tear, the capsule actually comes freely over the two fibrous bands without involving the fibrous bands at all. And that's interesting, isn't it? Sometimes you tear over it, sometimes you tear through it. Now what about this particular one? You can see this is a particularly nasty anterior fibrous uh, anterior fibrosis. So when I see something like this, you can see it's not so organized as the last one. I'm tearing through here and I'm encountering resistance. What I said just now, you hold near the, the fibrous band and you just test it and it was too re resistant for my liking. So I take out the venous scissors, uh, cut it and complete the capsulorexis safely that way. But when you've got a localized area of dense fibrosis like this, you've got to be careful. And as I found out during the rest of the procedure, as I finished the phaco emulsification, there was an area of zonulysis, one quadrant of zonulysis in there. And I had some warning signs earlier, so a, a, a CTR is put in just to stabilize it. And the point really is when you see focal severe fibrosis like this, ask the patient whether they had trauma, a traumatic history, because forewarned, is forearmed and the patient had a good outcome uh, uh, at, at, at the end of the day. But you also got to beware the white cataract. As Forrest Gump once said, you never know what's inside a box of chocolates. You never know what's inside a white uh, cataract. And if you look at this particular white cataract, um, this is a quite an old clip, so the quality isn't fantastic. So I'm tearing around and you can s just about see the band that's uh, just in front of my anterior capsular flap. And then here, you, you saw how that anterior capsule tore off because of the tripen blue, making your capsule more friable. And when you see that tearing happening, it means that there's enough resistance to pull. So I desisted in this case. I thought I'd come round from the other direction. I was being smart. Come round from the other direction to meet that area where I had resistance. And I thought it's only half a millimeter. Half a millimeter. I'm just going to tear through it. Whoops. Whoops. So that last half a millimeter is a pain in the proverbial, okay? <laughs> so of course when this is done, you have to adopt really very slow motion phaco techniques to not make that anterior radial tear extend uh, posteriorly. And the message from this, of course, is take your venous scissors out earlier rather than later. And finally, I do what I should have done at the very beginning, is get my venous out to uh, snip that offending band 
And at the end of the surgery, you see how thick that residual band is. No idea it was that bad when I started the surgery because it was a white cataract. Now here's another white uh, cataract, okay? So what I typically do with these is in case they're intumescent, I'll go in and just aspirate to decompress the uh, intralenticular pressure. And then I start my uh, capsulorexis. And again, coming around here, um, watch for the so how your anterior capsular flap behaves. If it tears, it means there's significant resistance. And when I come here, you can see there's resistance. I confess, I didn't see the presence of that band. Can you all see that band? There's a V-shaped band there. I was so intent on looking at where I was tearing and where I'm going, I didn't see that band. And so I'm encountering resistance here, and I'm cutting where my flap is, not where that band was. So in here you can see I'm trying to snip it and just to free that band which I thought was there. And you can see that radial, uh, that circumferential snip I've put in there. And when, then when I go and try and tear it, at some stage I finally realize that that wasn't the offending band, but it was the band that's right under my uh, capsulorexis forceps there. And you can see I'm picking at it. It's just not coming uh, just because it's still being held down by the band to the left of my forceps now and eventually I realize it and I'll take out the uh, 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 venous scissors uh, to do what I need had needed to do really in the first place. So you really got to pay very close attention to these white cataracts and you see that band there. I didn't see it, I only saw it at the end when I couldn't make progress and then you just snip what you think is offending and then the rest of the operation was much easier once that particular uh, band was snipped off I was able to catch that flap and continue with the rest of the rexis, uh, as you see here. So just finally, my final video is, I think flex is quite a nice thing to do when you have a fibrous band. Now, so the question is, I've done the flex, has it cut through only the capsule, or has it cut through capsule and fibrous, fibrous band? Don't know, let's try. Pull the capsule of rexis, and you can see it's coming away quite nicely over the fibrous uh, band. So you don't always need to go through the fibrous band. If the eye is kind to you, you can tear the capsule over the band and you can see at the end of the surgery that original fibrous band is still intact. So just to sum up, fibrous capsules give you, sort of challenge you with your capsulorexis. Beware of radial extensions. They can be occult. Beware of adjacent trauma or previous trauma and adjacent zonulysis. So just be slow and steady. Watch for resistance and observe its behavior. If in doubt, cut it out with your venus. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Ron. While Dr. Aldave is getting ready, uh, just a couple of quick sure. uh, questions. One is that I always find it uh, better to uh, stain these capsules, even if they're not white cataracts, because those areas become more evident and uh, easier. That's and a great, showed, great point, Ramon. And as you showed in the last video, I think having a femtosecond platform, just like in intubes and cataracts, is a great benefit here because even though you may not get a free floating rexis, you get a nice template. Yes. And sometimes I raise the, uh, lower the spot uh, separation also, use higher energy. And especially in some of these thinner uh, fibrous bands, it does cut through and you're able to uh, complete your rexis. Yes, I've, be, I've been impressed at how reliably the flax has yes. cut through fibrous bands. It is good. Yes, I agree with your staining because in the w when I look back at the times I've stained the white cataracts, it's actually identified a number of fibrous bands and you can see them better, absolutely. Right. 